Hey everyone, how's it going today? So, like I said, this is going to be 100% in VS Code. However, some of you might not be familiar with things like like or wildcards or in or between or really just SQLite in general. So before I get into the code, I'm going to actually show some slides. Now, if you don't want to see the slides, you think those are boring, look at the chapters, skip right ahead to the part where I'm actually writing the code. Totally cool. But um, if you don't know a whole lot about what I just said, any of those words don't sound familiar, be sure to check out these slides because I'm going to walk through the basics of what a where clause is and some of the attributes that come with it. Okay, so these are the slides on SQLite where clause. So what is a where clause? Well, a where clause is used to filter through records in a database table. Some places that it's commonly going to be seen in are select statements, update statements, and delete statements. Most commonly, you'll be using this with select statements. This is a great way to narrow down a query. You just want, you know, a special delimiter for your row that you're going to be selecting. A great way to think of a WHERE clause is just like an IF statement. I'm assuming if you're learning SQLite, you're already far enough in programming, you know what an IF statement is, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain it. Okay, so here's an example of a simple WHERE clause. Select all from a table where the, insert a column name, you know, maybe, I don't know, price equals example. So maybe price equals 10, or for example, select name where ID equals 2. This is going to give you just one row, right? Because we're assuming there's not multiple places where ID equals 2. ID is usually a primary key, so it has to be in itself that number and nothing else can have that number. So this would return just one row. This is a great example of a WHERE clause you'll be using all the time in, in your SQLite database because often you're going to have somewhere where you're going to have maybe you have a post and it's got an ID and somebody clicks the delete button. Well, how do you know to delete that? You would say, you know, delete from database where ID equals and then you would just insert the ID of the post that was clicked. I double click that. Okay, so basic where operators. Where clause has operators. Just like going back for a second, this equals sign, we have operators. Now, operators can be used to enhance your query, right? You need them for the where clause. You need at least one operator. Some simple examples of this are and, or, not, and equals. So an example is select column from table where condition. So maybe where number equals two and another condition ID equals four or maybe not ID because you'd probably want multiple things or else you would just query for the ID. So let's say where number equals two and number two equals four. You know what I mean? It would be something like that. So you would have two columns that you would be able to do. And the same can be said for or and not and equal. And again, I'm assuming you're familiar with if statements and basic conditionals, so I'm not going to bore you with this stuff. Next up, advanced where operators. Now this is where you really get into the beauty of SQL and SQLite, and you don't see these in basic programming. So there are several ways to compare a value in a where clause. Some examples that we're going to be covering here are like, wildcards, in, and between. So let's start with the between operator. The between operator basically does what it sounds like it would do. It checks for any value in between two variables. So an example, select column from table where the column is between X and Y. Real life example, let's say select, um, let's change this from column to store item from table where price is between five and 10. So anything that's between five and $10 you'd be getting back, you know, could be a plethora of things, could be just a few things, really depends on what's in your database. That's the beauty of between statement. Next up is the in operator, super simple. It's basically just or, that's what you can think of it as. It's used for multiple or statements. So in this example, select column from table where column in value one, value two, value three, but these are all just or statements. So each comma can be thought of as an or. Wildcards. Now things are going to get a little more complex. And I'm not going to cover all the wildcards, just going to give you a basic idea of what it is. So they are used to substitute one or more characters in a string. What does that mean? If you're familiar at all with regex, it will be immensely helpful because it's basically the same thing, 
all it's very similar so an example is going to be the percent wild card now imagine the key here is t we want to find stuff that have the character t if we say t percent sign it's going to find any value that starts with a t percent t underscore finds any value that ends with a t sorry that's a typo that's just supposed to be percent t there's not supposed to be an underscore there percent t percent finds any value that has a t anywhere in it you know so for example here let's think the word test test would work here test would work here and test would work here all good but you know let's take you know the name uh toenail toenail would work here because it starts with a t wouldn't work here because it doesn't end with a t would work here because there's a t in it but so would um you know if we take the name matt or the word matt either one you wouldn't it wouldn't qualify here because it doesn't start with a t but it would qualify for both of these now we're going to get a little more complex what happens when we add an underscore before the letter well, it's going to find T in the second position. You can think of these underscores as basically a space, right? So if I had two of them, it would find it in the third position, so on and so forth. So I can't really think of a word right now that fits that, but that's the idea of it. It would find a T in the second position. Now, what if I do T and then a whole bunch of underscores? And this is supposed to end with a percent sign. Wow, I really mistyped this. So sorry, this one, no underscore, this one ends with a percent sign. Um, so what that's going to do is there's three of these underscores, and that's going to find something that starts with a T and has at least three characters in it. So the word two, T-O, wouldn't work, but the word two, T-double-O would work, or Tim would work, Tom would work, things like that. Lastly, we're gonna do t percent k. That's gonna find something that starts with a t and ends with a k. Now you might be thinking, well, wh wh how do I use this, right? How is this helpful? Uh, well, before we get to that, other wildcards. These are some examples of them. Like I said, I'm just gonna be covering the percent. There's a plethora of wildcards, and when you need to do a complex query and you need to do something unique with a string. What you're going to want to do is just Google wildcards. This isn't something that you memorize. Definitely not easily. I use it frequently for work. I constantly Google the wildcards because I can never remember them all and what they all do. Okay, but they're used in what's called a like operator. So this is used to compare values with wildcards. A simple example is select column from table where col like m percent so what's, what is that going to do right we just covered it it's going to find any value that starts with an m and it's going to return them all so this would probably return a lot in the database you know maybe if you're looking at first name if that's the column it would return mike matt matthew mateo all kinds of names all right and that is the last slide hopefully that wasn't too painful now let's get on with the code all right now in order to do sql I 100% in Visual Studio Code. First thing you want to do is open up a nice fresh directory or fresh folder, and you're going to want to make two files, sql.sql and test.db. Now, we can close out test.db. We're not actually going to be using that. And in sql.sql, what we're going to type is, well, let's not even type anything right away. Let's press Control, Shift, and P at the same time. If you're on a Mac, that's going to be Command, Shift, and P at the same time. I believe Linux is also command shift and P, but I could be wrong. And then what we're going to want to type is SQLite run query. Now it's going to say choose a database for us. That is test.db. If you don't want to choose a database, you could use your memory, but that won't save things. So we're not going to use that. So test.db. All right. Now we can run some queries. Okay. Now what we can say here is create table products. What are we going to want here? We're going to want an... ID, which is going to be of type int, and it's going to be a primary key. Name, which is going to be varchar20, which means it can have 20 characters. It's going to be a string. Price, which is going to be an int. Um, and let's say color. 
which is going to be bar char 20. And control shift P, run query, syntax error. Let's see if we can figure out what our error is here. I just thought I didn't have a semicolon. Oh, never mind. There was no syntax error. The table already exists. Okay. Let's say here insert into products. And then we're going to grab everything except for the ID. So what did we have? We had a name, a price, and color. And we're going to insert in some values. So let's insert for name, we can say product one, price, let's say 10, color, let's say red. Run query. Okay, now we can comment all this out and let's make a simple select all from products. Run a query. Look at that. We've got a product, which is awesome. But what we want is more than one product so that we can test this. So product two, 20, green, Let's make the next one 30, product 3, green, product 4, gray, and let's make one of these 100, product 5, orange, why not? Okay. That should be all the test data that we need. Now let's get into some where clauses. Let's run this. Look at that. We've got all of these here. So let's start off with ones nice and simple. Let's say where, oh, the ID is null for all of them. Oh, I screwed up the ID. I didn't type it in right. <laughs> all right, whatever. We don't actually need an ID. I just wanted to include one because you usually include one in the database, but I've typed it in wrong. So it's not auto incrementing. Um, so where price equals 10. Okay. Run query. Now that's a very simple where clause. As you'll see, we only got one. I think I had a couple that were 30. So let's run that. Yep, we got two. So there's price. So something else I could say where price equals 30 and color equals green. Now I've only got one. And again, you know, there's and, there's or, there's not, all those fun stuff, fun operators that you'd have in if statements. So there's no point in covering them because you probably already know how to use if statements, like I said in the slides. So let's get to the good stuff. How about between? Where price between we want to be in between, let's say, 20 and 100. So now it's going to return all the ones in between 20 and 100. You'll see here if we do 99, we'll lose that 100. That's how between works. It basically just, you know, says, hey, give me everything in between these two numbers. Well, next up is the in operator. So in is basically just a whole bunch of ors. So what we can say here is color in. Okay, so let's grab two just to give you an example. Let's say green, comma, red. Now this should give me all the green and the red. This is just a really handy way to do a whole bunch of or statements. If, assuming that they have to, of course, all be in the same column for this to work. Now, something else I could type here is, you know, I could really throw in an and here, make it a little crazy, say and price equals 20. That should only give me one. Of course, I could also say or price equals 100, and that'll also give me the product five. Um, 
but this is really great if you have one column that you want a whole bunch of or statements for because that way you don't have to just keep typing them out all right next on the list is going to be like and wild cards so as I mentioned wild cards are pretty complicated we're just working with the percent one right now but let's say we want to grab anything that has the word green in it so what we're gonna say here is where color like now I feel like this is probably not the best example because let's say anything that starts with the G how's that sound so anything that starts with the G um, let's grab that and you'll see we get green green and gray let's do anything that ends with an N this should only give us green now let's do anything that has a G in it this should give us what we previously had but also give us the orange and there we go we also have the orange awesome so that is working perfectly that is like operator in a nutshell with how you would use it when using the percent symbol as I mentioned in the slides there are several other operators I'm not going to be covering them all right now but you know when you get to a point where you're writing an SQLite query and you're writing an advanced query and you really want to determine something special like that's more special this I mean these percents are the ones you're going to be using for the most part actually you know what um, just to throw something fancy in here we could say you know this ends with let's say we want anything that has an E in the fourth column, which will also be green. Run that. Oh, never mind. Did that wrong. I put one too many. Um, so that's going to give us just green, but not gray. But if we get rid of one of these, boom, we also get gray. So that's a little bit more fancy one. But if the percent symbols aren't enough and you need something really special, what you're going to want to do is just Google wildcards. And it's just one of those things you never really learn. I hate to say it, but you really don't. I'm a professional programmer and I haven't learned them all. I frequently find myself when I need to do a big query and it has to be very special and select something in particular, I will Google the wildcards and I will kind of get an idea of what I want. Some of the stuff like the percent symbol sticks with you because you use it so often, but some of it doesn't. It's the same kind of thing with regex, regex, I could say it right. But hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit. If you did, be sure to leave a like. It really helps me out a lot to know that people enjoyed my content. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'd be more than happy to help you out. I'll do my best. Um, if you want to see more tutorials and content just like this, please hit that subscribe button. I make constant content with back end, front end, full stack web development, and a little bit of game development too. So if you like the way that I do my videos, please subscribe and more content will come. I hope you have a great day. Take it easy.